You're watching Newsmakers from your local election headquarters. I'm Jane Ann Bugda along with Andy Mohalshik. And in this segment, we're joined by John Shrin. He is the Republican candidate for the newly formed 8th Congressional District. And this is an opportunity for our viewers to get to know you a little bit better. So our first question is pretty easy. Uh, just tell us a little bit about who you are briefly. Sure. It was great to be with both of you. So I'm a 10th generation Pennsylvanian. I grew up in the Lehigh Valley, someone who was uh, a member of a working class family, grandfather who was a steel worker at Bethlehem Steel, other grandfather was a coal miner, and I was the first person in my family to go to college. I had the benefit of uh, being able to go to Lehigh University where I met my wife who came to this country sight unseen from Tegucigalpa, Honduras. So from an immigration perspective, I've been the beneficiary of great immigration. And from Lehigh, uh, my wife and I both went on to attend Columbia Business School. And I've been a business person. I was a banker for many years. I traveled this country working with uh, companies, large and small, creating jobs. And that's one of the things I'm able to do really well in terms of understanding how the economy works and something I'm going to be very focused on in terms of Northeast Pennsylvania to grow prosperity for everyone in this region. John, in this extremely polarized political climate, some would say downright hostile and mean, how will you make a difference if you are elected to Congress? I think it's a terrific question. It's actually one of the things that uh, when I looked at, why do I do this? And people have asked that question many times. I looked at the polarization in Washington and said, you know what, we can do better. And I was very fortunate in terms of what I was able to do. And I believe the strengths I have as a business person, as a human being, are really bringing people together to get things done, to move the ball down the field, and to advance what we want to achieve. And it's frustrating to look at what's happened in Washington to say, no is not a strategy. We should be working for the people that you're elected to represent. And that's what I want to do. And I think I can do that because, again, I have a proven history over my career of getting things done. And of course, immigration is a hot button topic. Um, how, where do you stand on immigration? And how do we fix a system that is apparently broken? Well. Immigration is unbelievably important to this country, and it's complex, and it's something that needs to be fixed. Uh, if we look at it, it's something where both parties, really over the last 30, 40 years, have been guilty of not fixing something that is fundamentally flawed. And if we think about the beauty of this country in terms of what legal immigration has meant to this country in terms of just the growth, the expansion, uh, the cultural benefits that we've picked up, it's beautiful. But what we have now needs to be fixed. First and foremost, you have to start with securing our borders. And it's something that when you go through, I mentioned earlier that uh, my wife is from Honduras. And that's a country I've traveled to 50 times in my life. So I've seen firsthand the type of desperation and just the hardness of the life that the people have there. So we need to secure the borders. We need to come through and have a comprehensive plan that addresses all aspects of immigration. And it's something that if you try to do it as a one-off negotiation, it's not going to work. We have to sit down. We have to say, this is what we need to do. We need talent in many different industries across the board. As I travel the district, one of the biggest industries we have is agriculture. There are hundreds of thousands of jobs that are unfilled around the country, tens of thousands in Pennsylvania, where we need people that are going to work on the farms. We have people in the construction industry that uh, can't hire the, the people that they need to work. So when I think about immigration, it's something that I would love to play a very active role in. And it's something that, uh, again, based on what we need to do to drive this country, we can do it. But we can't just take things off the table. And I think that's been part of the problem. John, do we need to fix health care? And if so, how, how would you do that? Or how would you begin that, that repair? Yeah. Health care, let's step back. Again, I love to think of things at a macro level. The United States is spectacular, right, in terms of what we've been able to do to drive innovation around drugs, around devices that have made people's lives better in terms of the quality of life, extending human life. But if we come back and really look and grade ourselves and say, how are we doing as a country? We're not going to get an extraordinarily high grade. It's going to be in the B minus category because we spend too much of our GDP, the 
the gross domestic product on healthcare versus the rest of the world. So healthcare needs to be fixed. The Affordable Care Act, oftentimes referred to as Obamacare, is something that uh, really isn't working. Premiums keep going up. And it's something that I hear constantly from small business owners, from families that uh, it's so expensive, they don't understand what uh, and how they're paying so much for something that's not providing them uh, benefits. I believe we need to have something where uh, competition, okay, in terms of the providers, we have to protect people with pre-existing conditions. And that's one of the things that people are going to say, oh, uh, you're not going to do that. We will. I will. And it's just one of the things that should be sacrosanct when we look at how we do our healthcare better. Healthcare needs to be focused on results because that GDP where we spend the money too high relative to the expected life of a person in the United States, we should be focused on outcomes rather than treating at the back end when bad things have happened. Also a big believer that one of the good things that came out of the Obama administration on healthcare was the digitization of medical records. I believe we should be able to utilize that digitization uh, through machine learning, artificial intelligence, also to drive down the cost. So to me, the opportunity is to take costs lower and how do we bring more jobs to our area? Well, number one, you have to have a plan, okay? Anything in life, if you say, whoop, uh, just gonna expect it to happen, it's not gonna happen. And hope is not a plan. So the one thing that I've said is you go through and you look at this, and we have some extraordinary positive benefits in terms of uh, where we sit. And if we have a plan and really understand what businesses, whether they're investors, individuals, or bigger corporations, you have to know how to market and sell them the attributes and benefits that we have. I can do that extraordinarily well. Already have ideas in terms of the five, four or five industries that I think we should target that will drive very good job growth. Show me about one minute left. If you can, look into that camera and tell the folks in this district why they should support you for Congress. Sure. I think it's very important in this election that as you go through that you do your work and really understand who the candidates are that are running. Uh, there's a stark contrast between myself and Matthew Cartwright. Matthew is someone who really likes higher taxes, more regulation, unaffordable health care, and he also likes sanctuary cities. He's voted repeatedly in favor of sanctuary cities, although he's had a vote against it. We need to have somebody who's going to stand strongly against sanctuary cities. He's also someone that if you look at his record, he's voted 96% of the time with Nancy Pelosi. That's not the type of person I am. If you like that, you should vote for Matt. I'm going to be focused on the positive. I want to drive the economy, create prosperity, create better jobs for people in the northeast portion of Pennsylvania. And it's something that I have a proven track record of having done over my career and something that I will work passionately for all the counties, all the communities in this district and do it with the, the only way I know how to do, with hard work and, uh, and integrity. John, thank you for joining thank us you. today. For more information on John Schwinn, check out pahomepage.com or under the Newsmakers link. And we'll talk to you right after this.